Hi Leo, welcome to your July 2016 love reading. It's Raina here. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to talk to you about the transits that are occurring in the month of July. You have a lot of woo activity. You have the Sun and uh, Mercury and Venus in the 12th house and as the month begins and this is the house of past lives of spirituality of what else the house of buried issues and so this will make you be quite you know I don't know a little bit inside of yourself you may actually feel physically tired and this is to be expected but gradually these planets will leave the 12th house and you will start to feel more energized by the end of the month you should be raring to go because the Sun leaves the ho that house on the 22nd and enters your first house you have Venus going there even earlier on the 12th of the month and Mercury the, a day later when Venus and Mercury enter your first house, I feel like you're going to be kind of the Leo on the stage. And you're going to be a lot more energetic. And you're just going to be a lot more expressive. And I feel you're just going to be more outgoing. You might just be drawing attention to yourself in some way and maybe even trying to make yourself look better you are going to have the new moon though in the 12th house on the 4th of July and so you're going to have a new beginning when it comes to spirituality of some sort it could be something that you decide to do you may decide to start studying yoga maybe you'll take up some kind of uh, metaphysical study it's very interesting because um, you have this kind of combination of the self versus the cosmic soup, you know, and that's always uh, quite a contrast. And so when Venus is in your first house, you will seem very attractive to other people, be it for business or pleasure. So this can be utilized for anything that you want to promote regarding your own PR, whether it's a new relationship or whether it's a new job. You do have Mars recently having turned direct at the end of June, and this is in the sign of Scorpio. Now Scorpio is your fourth house. So during July, you're going to actually have Mars in your fourth house of home and family, and in its direct motion, there just may be a lot of things that are kind of um, acted upon, so to speak. So maybe you have been looking at renovating and now you're going to actually go forward with the plans or building a house, or perhaps you're going to try to sell your house. There may be issues within your family of origin that are that have kind of resurfaced and now it's like head on, you know, with your parents, things like that. Eventually, in August, we're going to see Mars go back into the sign it was when it retrograded, which is Sagittarius. And this forms a friendly angle with Leo of the fifth house of romance. So that will be an even more active period for those of you who are looking for love. The full moon in Capricorn is occurring on the 19th of July. And this is falling in your sixth house of health. So this may be a time when you discover something about your health or that you decide to embark upon a detox. And this can, you know, help you to reset and start a whole new way of eating or living. So let's look at the cards, Leo. The overall energy is the Ten of Pentacles. So this is a card that is related to family wealth. 
This could literally mean an inheritance. And let me see, the opposite sign of you is Aquarius, and then you have Pisces. Hmm. Well, that's interesting because Pisces, that would be your eighth house, that's what I was calculating. Pisces is the, the sign that had the eclipse back in March. So perhaps that eclipse energy is still present with Leos, and some of you may have some sort of inheritance on the table. It could relate to just working for your family or being helped by your family financially. A family business, I was thinking. But it could relate to a person who is a, an earth sign. Maybe this person is in your life right now. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Let's look at the past position. The past position is the Empress card. Were you with a Libra? It's funny, I really associate the Empress with uh, Taurus, but it is connected to Libra. It's connected to Venus, and Venus rules both of those signs. But this seems so earthy. This is the Earth Mother. So, um... There could be family issues. I mean, this could be that Mars energy. Maybe you're dealing with your mother and you're dealing with um, property matters, home matters that some of you may be dealing with that. But for romantic situations, perhaps some of you are dealing with um, someone who is a, maybe this is somebody who is the mother of your child. Maybe some of you are with somebody who has a baby mama. And this is the third person in the relationship. And it's something that is irking you. Maybe, maybe your partner is not involved with that person directly, but maybe she's trying to get him back. But again, it could be that you were with a Libran individual and now are with an Earth sign. The higher perspective, the message from the universe is the strength card. This is your card. Um, I, think in, I think that the universe is trying to tell you, you're a Leo, you got this. Whatever it is that may not be going the way you want it to, it's all good. You know, if you stand in your strength, and that's a quiet strength. That is not, you know, the woman is taming the lion. And she's taming it with a very gentle kind of a touch. You don't have to show, show a sign of strength by doing something aggressive to get what you want. So if there's somebody that you're with and they have another person and there's some kind of a conflict, you can be the bigger person so to speak, and that will be a sign of strength. Now, for relation, for business, um, the Empress card may suggest that you were, uh, this could be an artistic energy because it is associated with creativity, or even like somebody who gave birth and now may be working for the family. Or again, it could be that your family is helping you out financially because you have given birth and maybe you're not with your the father of your child that's always a possibility too let's just I'm just gonna keep going on seeing what I f find here um, the the energy that crosses you is the two of swords so there is a dilemma at hand or there are lo loggerheads now if you are with a Taurus uh, if and especially you know if that Taurus has a partner uh, that is, or an ex-partner who is creating problems, that person may have a hard time deciding what to do. Your partner. But it can be because you're both fixed signs that you, you know, are locking horns. And so, and that's why I picked Taurus, because it is an earth sign, but it's also a fixed sign like you. So any Leos and Taurians there together, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about, that you're both immovable objects. And so 
getting the other one to reason with you can sometimes be a total joke because you both are deeply entrenched in your positions. Well, what ends up happening is this um, kind of a, a loggerheads or stalemate. So you cancel each other out. It doesn't make much sense. Uh, it, it, it can be a, a situation of ha somebody having a hard time deciding. So maybe you're with somebody who is still with somebody else. Maybe they're two-timing the other person, and you're and you you're perfectly aware of it. You know, maybe he's two-timing the mother of his child, and you're perfectly aware of it. And what do people do when they're perfectly aware of such a situation? They justify it. Well, she's this, she's that. You know, she doesn't really love him anyway. She's just using him for his money. Or she just got pregnant. She trapped him. So I don't have to feel guilty that I'm participating in the cheating. Um, for, for those of you for, for which this is a business card, um, it may just be deciding which direction to go. Maybe... If you are working for your family, you may not like doing so, but you may feel like you have to. Some of you may want to pursue a, a creative career, but you feel like you have to do something, you know, maybe you're taking care of your family, you're doing something um, that involves your family and you feel like you have these um, ties or these obligations. And so you can't really decide, even though you really don't feel like uh, this is something that is good for you in some way, because, you know, sometimes people are burdened. And if there's something that is feeling um, uncomfortable about your situation, you still may have a hard time deciding what to do. Well, the energy to adapt or the mentality to adapt is the five of cups. So this does suggest some sort of uh, grieving period, something that is over that maybe you did not want to deal with. So maybe all of this conflict or indec indecisiveness is because this person is not fully committed to you. And if you can grieve it and accept the loss, that will allow you to move on. Maybe you have not been able to do that thus far. If there's a job, you know, conflict, and you're, maybe you want to do something and you feel like you can't, um, it may be a situation where you have to risk the unhappiness of a family member. And it may just require you realizing that you can't please everybody. And this is what this Five of Cups represents, because it is a type of grief. And, you know, it may be seen as a loss of some sort. So maybe there's a loss of, uh, you know, a perfect example of this would be if your family has a business and you just don't want to take it over from your parents, maybe that's what all of that conflict was about that I mentioned with the, um, the, the Mars in the fourth house. Maybe they want you to continue their business and you don't want to do it. And so you have to grieve the fact that you're going to disappoint them or that you're going to cause problems within the family and live your own life and uh, embark upon your own path. Maybe you're just a creative person and they want you to do something that involves money. You know, uh, you know, a shop. Something where you have to handle money or you have to worry about money and you just don't want to do it. That's not you. You're naturally a creative person. So that just may be something that you have to deal with, that there's going to be some kind of a loss. It may not be a literal person that you lose, but it may be that there is a shift in the relationship. So it loses that sense of innocence that it had, and it has to go into a new phase if it is a viable relationship. Um, the 
advice is the hangman card and this is really I think this is really sound advice in the sense that if there is a decision to be made you don't have to make it in one day you can kind of um, chew it over you know think it over and decide maybe you just have to stop trying to control it maybe it just is kind of not seeing any movement and it's because you're exerting too much force over it and it can't move so it may be about letting go and letting God and the outcome is the justice card so this means that whatever happens will be fair for all parties concerned maybe some of you are going through a divorce maybe this card indicates the mother and saying that you have the strength to endure it and you'll be helped by your family and so the outcome of the case will be fair to everyone but um, in terms of some other type of scenario like let's say a job um, you will see that whatever it is that you are pursuing that is for your highest good if you're not doing something out of selfish selfish motives but you're doing it because you want to make your life better then you don't have to feel a sense of guilt or sense of a sorrow that you are embarking on a path that's right for you you can know that everything is where it should be and um, it's a great card too because it indicates that there is fairness in the situation even if you can't see it even if you think that it's um, everything is up in the air you know which this is kind of like what this card represents there is a sense of everything being exactly how it should be and um, I like to see that as well now I'm gonna just pick the card from the bottom of the deck I had that idea with cancer so I'm gonna do it with Leo it is the seven of pentacles so this is a card of patience and I do associate it with this card um, whatever it is if you are involved in some kind of creative project or some kind of romance or even if you're getting divorced and you're not sure how things are going to turn out this card says wait and see see what happens in other words, don't just react. Have patience. So, Leo, I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you'd like a personalized reading using your birth data in a natal chart as well as the tarot, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have a great month. Bye.